the um, number three on our agenda, discussion of field site visits. Uh, just for the record, we did visit Ann Antolini at 4.30, had a good site walk, visited the upper fields behind the school, took a look at the woodlands to the west. We have that letter. We measured the field. We have more comments. Thank you. Now, I'll uh, say this is uh, <coughs> obviously dated February 21st, 2008. I'll just tell you out of the four pages, if you see the, the uh, volume of page information from the Recreation Commission where this was registered, the, the third page is not there. It was just a signature page from our engineer identifying that he was signing off on the first. There was no content. So, if, if anybody wants the signature page from Todd Parsons, I'd be glad to provide it, but I just, I didn't want to make our town clerk waste the ink and the toner. So, um, this has been considered before. Uh, it was considered as uh, early as February 2008, when uh, Earl McGinnis was first selectman and asked, you know, our consulting engineers at Lennard to take a look at uh, a preliminary look at Antolini as well as another site for potential development with recreational sports field. And uh, they presented 10 initial findings. Uh, first and foremost is that, uh, as we see on page one, the existing field is east-west. Apparently that is not ideal in the perfect world of sports fields. Uh, because of the sun orientation, at some point somebody's going to be looking into the sun in the fourth quarter or the second half of the Why soccer game. Why is the opposing team? I don't <laughs> well, I think, <coughs> you know, it's, <coughs> there obviously is a tree line oh, there also. Right but, I mean, in a perfect world, a north-south orientation is ideal. Uh, number two, earthwork, approximately two-thirds of the field uh, is existing. The remaining third on the west side would require some cutting and filling to bring it to grade, and they estimate that uh, the cut fill would be in the range from zero, where they feel it's level to a maximum of 10 feet. Uh, they also note that the existing field is not graded perfectly or consistently, and the town would have to decide you know, what we wanted to do if we wanted to go in and do a full disturbing you know, regrade of the whole field. Number three, approximately one third of the new field, they call it new, I call it expansion, uh, would be constructed in the area that's currently woodland, and obviously we would need to cut the trees, so they state the obvious. And in that, in the cutting trees, number four, a portion, there's an obstacle course, uh, a ropes course, that is no longer utilized, and I, I did check with Kate Rieger, who's now the capital subcommittee, that it's no longer used portion of an obstacle course is in the area of the proposed field and that would need to be either relocated, they say relocated or removed. Uh, growing period, and I think this is important, uh, generally athletic fields require at least one full season for a turf to mature before it can sustain play. This means that uh, an entire new field or any portion therein that is disturbed would likely be out of commission for a year. So thus the reason here we are entering budget season that if we choose to make this or any other property a priority, we just know that the timeline is such that it's not going to be an instantaneous uh, solution to the problem. It takes time. So, uh, obviously, say that the, uh, the time period could be shortened using sod, but at a significant expense. And now, obviously, there's also artificial turfs and you name it. I mean, if you wanted to to uh, pay the money, you can obviously increase the cost and shorten the time frame. Construction access is number six. The logical construction access for construction equipment is from the driveway to on the east side of the school, then across this field. Uh, if we use that, then obviously there's restoration of the field in the area that was disturbed. 
It is also likely that the driveway to the field was not intended to carry heavy equipment, so that may be damaged if that is in fact the case. Excuse me, Dan. Could I just pass this around? Just sure. Have a look at it. Sure, we have a couple more yeah. copies, and anybody, <coughs> anybody that wants the information can get it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So they can, anyone wants to follow what he's saying. Okay. Uh, soil types, which I think is pertinent. USD mapping shows that most of the area in the uh, construction area proposed uh, is uh, Gloucester. They list the soils, Charlton, Hollis, Chatfield. But most importantly, there are no wetland soils shown on the soil maps in the vicinity of the area. Significant. Okay. Uh, baseball, number eight, uh, the proposed field will overlap in their schematic, which you see in the diagrams that they have. Uh, would overlap the baseball diamond. This could be avoided if the field is shifted to the west, but obviously the more you go to the west, the more you're constructing and the more the cost goes up. Uh, alternate layout, uh, an alternate, this is number nine, an alternate layout or rotating of the field to a northwest southeast configuration is possible, but would likely disturb more of the obstacle course and require more earthwork. So, I know that we measured to 420 feet, which was kind of in the middle of the obstacle course. But I think at this point, I, if we're all acknowledging that the obstacle course yeah. is not used, I don't. Oh, think I agree. That, you know, it's pretty sir, and it's fairly it's level. It's really up. just a mild slope where we walked up mm -hmm. and down. <clears throat> and then the tenth item is full design. If the town decides to pursue this project, it will require full design based on accurate topographic survey. Once a survey is complete, LEI, which is Lennard, could further evaluate various alternate layouts. The survey will need to include the location of underground utilities, water supply, obstacle course equipment, other site features that may affect the design. LEI anticipates that the majority of the work will be undertaken by a site contractor, hence the full set of specifications and bid documents, which is not unlike what we did with the field house. We had them design the spec. And uh, that really makes it easier that you get apples to apples. And then uh, if the town wishes to employ volunteer or town labor force, LEI recommends that those forces be used to, for segments of the project that can be easily separated from the majority work, such as relocation of the obstacle course or tree course. So there are parts that you can take out to save money. You know, we have you know, the town crew, the chipper, you know, there's not a lot. Of, the thing that I noticed there, not a lot of old growth forest. A lot of smaller trees in the, the six to seven to eight inch caliper range. It's almost like it was cleared and not too long ago. It's you know, especially small, right off the field. Only a small section of the site that has any trees. So, right there, there were a couple of trees. I, I don't want to downplay it, but you can see that they went so far as to review aerial maps with a little bit of soil information to show the geography in relation to the the property design on the. Uh, first map, and then they blow it up to show a little bit more with the topographical contours, you know, showing that it's about 810 feet above sea level, and that it slopes down, obviously, to the school where you could see the roof. But um, what did you guys think of the, the site? Well, I think it's, uh, I think we're, we're probably not be all in agreement that it makes more sense to pursue we're going to pursue any of those two uh, choices at the VN to lean. There's too many uh, things going against the old steel road property mm -hmm. and everything going for the Antolini property. Sure, it's going to take a little bit extra work, take a little bit of money, but if this is, you know, what we want to do for the kids in our town and provide them with another field, it just makes more sense to go with Antolini. Mm -hmm. I thought that, like I outlined at the property, first and foremost, you own it. Right. So instead of having a capital appropriation going to the Board of Finance and then going to the town, mm -hmm. which don't forget, even if we chose to go that route on Old Steel Road or any other, which we're going to discuss Old Steel Road mm -hmm. separately, but don't forget, if you, you're going to go to the people. You're going to go, you're going to authorize, this group is going to authorize me or a subcommittee of us to go negotiate. We'd have an executive session decide our parameters of what we want to do. But then we would have to outline a contract that would presume that any contract approved would not only gain board of finance and, and mute eventually town approval, but it would also include our land use board because any can, we'd have to have a guarantee in the contract to say, look, if the land use board is not going to approve it, 
contractor would need all the zoning. We have to have zoning started. approval and and well, and so there's two <coughs> agencies. You know that you have to now. We know here that our engineers said that they don't foresee any wetlands issues, but still you have to go and you have to make sure you have to get the soil scientist. But as I said, first and foremost, you own. Secondly, the infrastructure, the value of the infrastructure at the school, especially the parking, which is one of the complaints that we've heard mm -hmm. from Niles Road, is not necessarily that the park up there can't handle it, but the parking is so small up there that they have to park on the street. And then we have also heard the, the secondary issue of, you know, it's a fall sport. It gets dark early. It's not like a spring or summer for, sport where it's light until 8 or 9 o'clock. You know, these folks get out of work at, at 5 o'clock, they get up there at 5.30, it's already dark. Well, I think you know, the, school, the school, you know, the school, you know, I, you know, use that playing field with my children, you know, years ago when they were students at the school. And... So it would be an improvement, you know, we, we, maybe an opportunity to improve the access to the field with better steps or, you know, more better handicap access as well as expanding the, the parking areas that the school would benefit from. The synergy every day, with the yeah. kids sure. every day. Plus, is, this is midget football, so how old are these kids? They're probably in the school, right? They're, they're, yeah, 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 yeah school. they're in the school already. Yeah. So there's three you know, or four teams. Yeah. I don't know what the oldest. But they're probably, is. you know, fifth, fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. Mm -hmm. So that's eighth, eighth, eighth grade. Eighth grade. Okay. Once you get to high school, you can't play. Thank you. But some of the students, that, some of the football players might be ending their school day and be able to practice and be at the school already. That's my point. I don't know if I... It starts right? later. Yeah, it starts, starts later. later. Oh, okay. So they go home and come back. But the, even that, that's only one portion of the school year. Right. Yeah, you're talking just about that fall. You also right. have the spring. Yet you have a baseball field up there. We don't have one of the things that was acknowledged in one of the public meetings is that we don't have a softball field for our girls. Okay, we do have challenges with we have a lot of participation in travel soccer and recreation soccer. So, you know, the fact that the, you know, the football mirrors soccer, we want to make sure that if we chose to go in this direction, that we provided a suitable size that we can do both. So I think I think there's a lot of pros there. And I think mm -hmm. geographically location. We've right. heard we've heard some comments from um, people in the Niles Road neighborhood that that street is in a rural location and you know you're bringing traffic into that area. I don't necessarily agree with all of the concerns about location because we already have Birdie Park, the northern section. It is a destination location for people in town to go to the beach, to go right. to everything that is Brody. But you can't argue with being at the intersection of Route 219 and Route 202 off of State Highway. It is, it is not necessarily the geographic center of the town, but it's close. It's to the south of the center. If you put the geographic center kind of by my dad's house, Town Hill, kind of 219 right there in the middle. You're just, you're a mile or two south. I don't think there'd be any complaints about the lighting that the football field would have either, so. Right. In the other locations, you're, you're You already have lights up there in the parking lot tonight. Yeah, but, you can but see if you were to light up the football field, if they came, if you built the football field with lighting, you don't have any neighbors at the Aunt Antonini School that would be opposed to the lighting because no one lives around. Well, there, there are a couple. A few people, but not, but not still, within the 70 acres. We're, we're talking about should we choose to make this a priority for the town, then we would, we'd have to define our course of action, <coughs> which would mean we have land use agencies, again, whose we're altering property. We need to go to the land use boards, work with our commissions, and, you know, get, get our, all of our agencies in town, board of finance, recreation, Inland wetlands, even though we still have to sign off planning and zoning and our group to say how are we gonna how are we gonna get together to solve this problem. And, and this is before this is this property or any other that we choose to modify. So I think there's a lot of a lot of pros to Antolini. I'm not really sure that I know the cons yet. And I know that I've had brief discussions with the superintendent. I know that they visited this issue before. 
I know that the board has changed somewhat, you know, so obviously we would have to work with the board of it also to say, look, you know, we see an opportunity, we see uh, some level of uh, improvement, for that. improvement for for the contention over the of the location. But don't forget, this does not necessarily solve all your problems because you have recreational soccer that practices there four nights a week that would then be removed and have to go somewhere else. And with Brody Park, South Brody Park, New Hartford Elementary remaining once viable you, locations. Once, you, once, once, you know, <clears throat> the proposal that you have for 2008, though, I mean, once you maybe got, you know, some typographical uh, survey of the land, there might be a possibility to build more than one field. I mean, if there, I mean, as we went down, because my perception of the 2008 document says that the the uh, the ropes course stays. And there's no field work there, so I mean, there, there there might even be a potential for more than one field. That's my point. I mean, if you're gonna if you're in there with all this construction and all this, there might be an opportunity for that. Well, at 420 feet, which is what we measure, I mean, 300 just for the playing surface, right. another 60 for the end zones, right? Right. So you 360. You got to have some perimeter area. You have to go around. No, no, People I have to be no, able to traverse no, I, around I, I the edges that. of the fields. But 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 it's 70 acres. Oh, I know, but it shows yeah. the yeah, schematic of the area. field. And the only it's thing going I would, up the hill here. Yeah, you might not be able to get to it. Beyond that ropes course, the elevation changes. Yeah, and when you start right, talking right. about elevation changes, you start talking about price changes. So No, but I just look at that, you know, that parking lot the <coughs> side entrance, you know, of the Anthony of the Anthony School, which is small and that that topography, you know, there where it jets up mm -hmm. ten or twenty feet, you know. I'm just saying that, you know, the however it lays out, it, it, you know, I guess what I guess what my perception of, of what I saw in the walk is, even if you weren't going to build a new, you know, proposing a, a, a football field, the area needs improvement. The existing area needs improvement. It seemed a little bit tattered and run down to me, mm -hmm. you know, and that's just my perception of, you know, having not been there in 15 years. It doesn't look like a lot changed, you know, as far as. Are you talking about the grounds? Well, yeah, the, the grounds. grounds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they well, have. I know that the school does. They've they've had some plans for the future to take care to redo all the yeah. the pavement or the kind of the macadam or whatever you call it. Well, I think when you look at, are you talking about the field or the infrastructure? I'm saying both. With regard to the overall the infrastructure, uh, two years ago. There was a, a move afoot to discuss putting money into Antolini School, okay. and now we don't forget recent history. We passed a bond for New Hartford Elementary, we passed a bond for Bakerville, and the guidance that the prior board, Tom Clebart and Bruce and myself said, we would consider that the selectmen would consider that option. At which point, the bond expired for the payment of Bakerville School, which is a ten-year note, which is which will expire September 2014. So you're going to make, in this budget, you're going to make your second to last payment. And then, you know, they, they're looking at, and it was a thoroughly vetted, talk about redoing the roof, talk about doing windows and door projects. Alicia on the Board of Finance, we discussed this up and down. And, and there was also furnaces that were inside. We paid furnaces for the ca by cash. And, and upgraded the heating system already because we could afford it. It was you know, hundred thousand dollars, and we got them more efficient boilers and, and got the old boilers out of there. But when you start talking about windows and doors on a forty thousand square foot building, the numbers start getting higher, and we got to front it before we get reimbursement from the state. And the roof is a big enchilada. But what we said, and I think the community kind of heard, was if you have a hundred or hundred twenty-five thousand debt service payment in your budget built in right now to take care of Bakerville. You could start studying and get the proposal together and you can pitch that idea so that when that last payment expires, you can do some work on Antolini and take care of that infrastructure that we all own, but you do it at no well, tax increase to I think the tax saying, I think you're saying, you know, in essence, you're saying the same thing that I am, that, you know, there's an opportunity to solicit funds from more than one 
agency because the school is already there. Maybe we could get funds, like you say, for the Ed funds or federal funds that might improve some of the infrastructure that are adjacent to the proposed field that would enhance the proposed field in the end. Well, in the thing that we're talking about that strikes me is that we don't have very many people coming to our meeting. There's people here now because we're dealing with a sensitive issue of there's been people at other meetings talking about the use of South Brody Park. We don't generally get a whole lot of people coming here, so we sense a concern. Our job is to try to find a solution to problems. That, that infrastructure upgrade for Antolini has been out there and been talked about, but the question that I think we need to start discussing is the timeline. You know, because if we choose to say, yeah, we support doing something, but we don't put any money behind it, then it's just lip service. You know, everyone says, yeah, you talk about it, you talk about it, you talk about it, but you didn't do anything about it. Do, do we want to strike a middle ground where we would go at this proposal, Antolini, or any other, to say, yeah, we, we know we're going to work on the school eventually, but we're not happy with, you know, the size of the organization and what it does. I mean, we could put money into the parking in South Brody Park, but I think that's just going to up the debate. You know, what, when you could take that money for parking in South Brody and put it into field expansion, put it in a less contentious location where the school kids could use it and you already got parking and you, you don't have to acquire it. So there's a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about capital going on. Let's talk about Old Steel Road. Hey, did, did, did you want to ask anybody if there, anybody has any input about Let's Let's talk about both. both. Want, okay, <laughs> and then if the, it's okay with yeah, the group, we can take yeah. input. The, the Old Steel Road property we measured at, why don't you reread that? Thanks. We did have some information put forward to us by uh, Dan Eddy from the Rec Commission with some. Okay, so the first measurement that you took was yeah, from. Yeah, the correspondence first. This one? Right. Which measurement do you want first, Dan? The one you did? So the first one was by the where we parked. Right over to where, where the uh, mm -hmm. where the followers had identified was. Not just that. I'm going to write on mine. Don't write on yours because okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So the, the first measure was where you were parked, mm -hmm. over to where the followers told you was the uh, the corner the corner of the property mm -hmm. that was 320 feet. Okay. And then when you went down. To the from the corner down to the other end, it was 620 total. Where it starts to really get narrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was yeah 300 to the middle of 320. Okay. Okay. So in a perfect world, if that was a pure rectangle, it'd be four and a half acres, which we know that it's not. Okay. You want so. The different widths? So just so we're clear, if yeah. the assessor's office is saying that it's 10 acres, we know that 55 or 60 percent of the property is above the right of way that accesses Arbucci's house. Is that a fair? Because we know that it's certainly not. I mean, I could scale it. The the northernmost. The width. The northernmost width. 135 feet? was 135 feet, and that's before we got all the way into the corner. I mean, obviously, it, it, it dives into nothing up and up. And then 255 in the middle. Okay. By that clump of trees. take on it is this. First and foremost, we don't own the property. So what once again, like we outlined, the procedure to acquire is that you have a capital outlay before you even hit the go button. You don't own it. Okay? So there's money put out of hand in a negotiation of contract that would assume municipal approval at all levels, including land use boards, and ultimately referendum or town meeting to acquire property. I think you have uh, 
challenges with access. I think that we will eventually, as a group, work through the Stedman Road collapse issues, but you have sight line issues coming out to 202. You would have major infrastructure required on a dead end street on Old Steel Road that we all saw the condition, right? I think then you have land use requirements for setbacks and parking that if we took that property and the diagram of the picture that you folks got, and you can share this with Jack, that if you, if you see where the 300 foot mark is, right before that second set of, I believe it's sumac, this first field would not be built on this diagram. If you had to build a, a parking area of similar size to what we have at Brown's Corner, and we know what happens on, on days, I, I have many pictures of how they park on the islands, mm -hmm. they park on the, the setbacks in the front, they park down by the baseball, they park in where the sand and gravel is. You know, we have 150 or 160 parking spaces. Gravel, the thing about gravel parking lots is there's no lines. So you think you get 150, but you get one SUV or minivan that, that parks a little bit off, and the next thing you know, they take two. So, and then you have, you have access requirements for the neighbors, you know, where the, we saw that there's rights of way through the property, one to go to the butter and one to go up to Arbucci's house that you can't block. And I think if you look at this one diagram, it shows some of the parking area on up the on the side. side of that hill, yep. 30, 40 feet above. I think. It just, I, I don't think it can work. I think that um, the yeah. challenges, and I think we discussed this, is that I think the challenges for this would be too much to overcome. Mm -hmm. well, I totally agree with you, plus, you know, I, not to mention the, the, the neighbors that already live there, you know, that's more of a, it, it's not a, it's not a, a nuts and bolts financial aspect, but it, it has a real effect on the people that are already living there, and I would not want to put those people through something like that that they don't want. There's no reason to put something there to upset the residents, when we have another alternative, well, I think the writing, you know, I, I agree with the leash of that. You know, you do have neighbors there that may not, that may not want it, and that would be, you'd have to probably do a zone change, would you? Or no. We're in residential zone now. There, there has been zone. Changes to the zoning regulations, and we have one of our commissioners here, but I'm not going to ask him to comment. Yeah. There, is, there is a new provision for something called the <coughs> utility zone for the town for all properties that are municipally owned to allow them to be used the fashion that they're developed. Right. It basically goes to them. I'm not uh, an expert in that at all, but I think that whenever you're talking about it, if, if we had to do a zone change or whatever you're talking about, you're talking about, again, Municipal approvals is a contingency of the contract, which means that our actions in a negotiation are contingent upon the actions of others. You know, there's no guarantee. You know, this is this is above and beyond. You know, the neighborhood input, the community input. You know, we we've heard comment at some meetings. You know, where people have come to to discuss the trees and. And eventually the conversation turned to football at South Burby Park. Right. And they talk about the location of Niles Road and the width of that road. Where, I mean, I've, I've driven every road in New Hartford. Niles Road is a fairly standard 20 to 21, 22 foot road. I don't disagree. It's certainly twice the size of Old Steel Road. I don't disagree that, 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 that many of the concerns that the public has about the use of Burby Park South as, as, as opposed to football field are the similar concerns, if not identical concerns, that some of the neighbors that are here from Old Steel Road would have. Um, so, that being said, you know, if there's an opportunity to, to hear from the neighbors tonight, I would like that, uh, and from those, and for, 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 for Dan Eddy, who did quite a, quite a bit of due diligence 
and putting the information together and contacting the property owner as well as the other members of the Recreation Commission, maybe, you know, I don't have any other questions. I think maybe these folks would like to have, you know, some input as to what their thoughts about are on the two locations. You, know, you want to take some comment? That's fine. That's fine. I'm not. Okay. No objection. Yeah. 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 <coughs> Does any of the public want to comment on either of the two site visits or anything that they've heard? This Anybody morning? that went to the first site visit that wants to comment at all? Anthony? The, uh, the rec uh, I really applaud the efforts that the Board of Selectmen is, is putting forth in this endeavor. I think that uh, the Recreation Commission was approached by Youth Sports for new field space. I think that was the proper approach. Recreation Commission <coughs> would then come up with options that it would present to the Board of Selectmen, and it seems the Board of Selectmen may want to preclude that, and that's fine with the Rec Commission because that means we have to do less. The Rec Commission thought that the, the, the site that the youth sports had landed on, which was Brody South, was a very controversial site in town and it should be further studied, which is what is going on right now at the behest of the Rec Commission. A group was formed of the Conservation Commission, Open Space Commission, Friends of Brody, Rec Commission, New Sports, which seem to be the most interested parties in what may go on at Brody South or large, large, <coughs> large parcels of land in town. That group has spent a year or two reviewing probably in excess of 15, maybe as many as 30 sites, private and public. There are very few parcels that the town owns in an effort to find the highest and best use of a parcel of land. It has come down to, as I came before the old board and requested funding for there has been an environmental study done on the 150 acres of Brody South. Um, the subcommittee thought it would be appropriate to do an environmental study on the f three other parcels it seems that it sees as potentially viable parcels. One what, being, are, what are those three other parcels? One being the <laughs> Old Steel Road side. property. What, which one? The Old Steel Road Steel property. Road, yeah. The second one being the, the field directly behind Antolini. And if you review the topos of so the... the so the, the second one is the site visit that we went. Correct. Yep. The, and if you review the topos of Antolini, the 70 acres of Antolini, there is another substantially flat area. If you're facing the school to the rear right-hand side of the property up um, East Cotton Hill Road, Okay. And the commission thought it would be appropriate to study those three sites from an environmental perspective. If none of those were precluded by an environmental study, then, um, as I outlined before the, this, the prior Board of Selectmen, um, the committee had hoped to undertake a cost analysis, an engineering cost analysis of the four sites, but we don't want to do that if the environmentals, which are were ver are very inexpensive, if the environmentals preclude any of those sites, why spend money with a cost engineering study? Um, the board of selectmen has graciously agreed to fund that as soon if there are if there are funds left from the roofing project. So the the Brody South subcommittee um, is waiting to see if the funds, if there are any funds left to fund the study. If not, I assume it will be part of next year's budget um, at the um, agreement of the Board of Selectmen. At that point in time, the Brody South subcommittee would make its recommendation to the Recreation Commission, who would then pass along the recommendation to the Board of Selectmen. Um, and certainly you guys can take a lot of that away. <laughs> <laughs> um, by making the decisions now. Um, what we have discovered is the, uh, the um, Antolini site that has been referred to tonight, which I was part of. The, uh, John Mashey and I got together with Earl and Carl 
to look at three sites back in OA, Antolini being one of them, talking about not engineering. That field that is laid out is, in fact, the proper size for a football field because at that time we were only considering a football field. We're now, subsequent to that, um, in further studies, as Dan has pointed out, there is a substantial need for recreation space in this town. Not only girls softball, um, and a field that hopefully is large enough to accommodate both football and soccer overlaid, not the two fields independent. Overlaid. That would be about four or five acres. But if you were to overlay the two, which is what Dan measured out up at Antolini, long enough for football field, because that's longer than soccer, and wide enough for soccer, because that's wider than football. football. Um, and that's, that's what we've been studying, but there's certainly a need, as Dan pointed out, for girls softball. Brown's Corner, as it's currently laid out, um, doesn't accommodate any adult sports, softball, or other outdoor group activity, ta um, flag football, or, or other, uh, beyond the age of 18, <laughs> organized sports. Um, so hopefully the Rec Commission is, is looking at that whole picture and will pass along a recommendation. Along those lines, um, Antolini, as, as Dan pointed out, the field space may or may not be significant to, uh, to and cost-wise to uh, improve on, and that's why the subcommittee had thought the engineering cost studies would be useful. Um, one of the drawbacks to Antolini will be parking, as Dan has repeatedly stated, if you're looking to use Antolini as competition field, you are looking at 160 or more parking spots, as Dan has indicated. Browns Corner at 106, I believe Browns Corner is currently 170, isn't large enough. The current parking, including the asphalt area that is technically a play area, but they use for parking during events. My best estimate is about a hundred tops. And the facility is used on weekends. So I, the, the committee thinks without these studies, that's why we feel the studies are important. The committee feels that you're probably going to need parking for 180 to 200 up there because you need the 160 for the sports and you'll need 20 or 30 for the activities that normally go on on a Sunday or a Saturday up at the school. And just to interrupt you for a minute, and your, your, your guesstimate is that there's combined parking at the, at the Ann Anthony School that we visited today, there's 100? There's about 100, yes. So if that field is to be the competitive field, we are looking, that would be an additional expense that might be significant. Um, the Rec Commission has heard that there are considerations for additional practice fields. The Recreation Commission at this time and in the foreseeable future does not see any need for practice fields. We need to much better utilize the fields that we do have, but we do not need to spend any significant money to increase practice field space. Uh, currently, New Hartford Elementary is dramatically underused. Um, this year we made an effort to have football move down there in early September. The superintendent was agreeable was based on the principal being agreeable and he was agreeable but football was not agreeable. But there were only two soccer teams at New Hartford Elementary this year and they both used it on a Tuesday. I, for 10 years, I organized all of the practice schedules and game schedules for soccer. Pine Me New Hartford Elementary, I knew it as Pine Meadow, <laughs> many of you do, um, is always dramatically underused. So soccer, <coughs> our feeling is soccer should probably move off of there and it may be better. It's flatter, there's parking, um, there's a ton of, there are a lot of good reasons to support football using that as a, as a location. Um, but not as a permanent location. As a practice field. Right, practice. Football practices sometimes, starts practice sometime in early August, practices every night of the week until late August, and then when their season begins, they practice three nights a week until the end of the season. 
you know, what I would what I would oh. say is, is my, if I can, Dan, is that, you know, maybe it's possible, you know, again, I'm you know, not an engineer, I just walked the site as, you know, as, as you guys for, for the first time looking at it, looking at it, you know, as improving it and, and but maybe maybe there's room within the acreage to to add these additional, you know, fifty or eighty oh, parking I, spaces. I think you know, cut some great. of that dirt that's, out, use yeah, it in the in another area. Yeah, that's so that's exactly would what I'm saying. Possibly we need, a savings, we you know, need you don't have to buy the dirt if it's already there, but you need you a, know, we need an because, engineering study to find out what the costs would be to improve that yeah, council. No, and I, I would say too that I mean, I've been to a, you know, some of some events at Anna Angelini years ago with my my children attended school there, and after that I've been to a couple events, and it doesn't seem like there's enough parking there as it is. I mean, people park down the road, you know. And the, and the circular areas, jammed been up there for park. breakfast with Santa. Lately? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's you know. So it Seven doesn't seem like there's enough for breakfast. Room. That's right. Yeah. You know, that's quadruple of what football, you know, I, I, we football yeah. doesn't yeah. compete with Santa. I'll yeah. just tell you that right now. <laughs> Not even close. So okay. So yeah. that's largely where where the the recreation and okay. the, the study group stand. And certainly, if the board of select don't want to take over all that work, that would be great. Sorry, before you speak, I just want to say I have a couple things back for Dan. Dan, you did say that you're thinking that the Board of Selectmen is precluding these whole decisions, but isn't that what you you kind of requested of us? You sent all of us a letter asking us to look at these two, three fields. No, so no, we're not trying to preclude that, you. No, we're trying to move this forward that, and come to a decision. That is and, not, I, and that's why we're all here. That is not the request that's on the table. The request that's on the table is for funding. And I understand the environmental no, the studies letter that you sent, done. The letter that you sent the three of us right. individually, did you want us to address it or did you want us to ignore it? We're addressing it. We're not trying to preclude okay. you. We are moving forward based on some information that you provided to all of us outside of this office. You've mailed it to our in, our homes, Correct. and that's fine. We're addressing this, and we're going to move. We're trying to move forward and come up to a solution for everyone. We're not trying to preclude anyone. Okay. That's why we're here. And second of all, the one another thing that you noted. I, I'm not sure if you if you want us to consider New Hartford Elementary for football. Am I getting that not from you? Not for permanent. Not for permanent. Because you didn't. You, you had a statement saying we don't need any more practice fields. Correct. But if we need more competition fields, then we should consider some additional uses, not just Appear. not just temporarily take Hold football. Out. Out. Wait, wait, wait. Let me finish my statement. I have an Not just for temporarily you. take football out of Brody Park South and put them in New Hartford Elementary temporarily, but let's find a solution to permanently house house this. And New Hartford Elementary, according to Carl, when he was planning and zoning officer, cannot be used um, at, as an extensive competitive field. It's too close to the river. But to use it as a practice facility was fine. So that's why New Hartford Elementary is not considered as a potential. It was considered as a potential <coughs> From competition field. Formal field. But in, in our research, and, and we do discuss things with RISTA now, and we had discussed things extensively with Carl in the past, um, the, the letter is, is simply because the, the, the prior board of selectmen left me with a feeling that they were very uncomfortable funding anything to do with Old Steel Road. The letter is was to not preclude, hopefully, not preclude Steel Road from the possibilities. Let the studies preclude it. It wasn't to act on any of the parcels because we don't have the studies done. But I was left with the feeling that were the, board, were the prior board to approve the funding for the environmental and the engineering cost overview, Steel Road would not be considered at all. It would be precluded right up front. And it, at the time, and if this board chooses not to fund those studies, then so be it. 
But that's all it's asking for is the studies, not to go ahead with anything else because the studies may preclude it. Yeah, but let me just say something. Okay. I've gotten a few emails about the studies, you know, <laughs> so, and, you know, I'm not saying that we shouldn't study, you know, whatever, whatever, we, you know, we need to, we, I don't know if we should study a site that we don't have a right to purchase. <coughs> You know, we, so that's one. That's just my feeling. You know, that might you know might be good money after bad. If 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 for some reason we did a study, and then you know, you know something happened to one of the Fowler brothers, and they changed their mind, and they decided not to sell it to us at all. Even though they said they would sell it to us now, you know, my thought would be, if we're going to spend a lot of money on studying something, let's make sure we have. If if the study's in our favor, let's make sure we have the right to purchase it before we study. The first study is five hundred and fifty dollars. Second thing, I mean, we want to study. We're, we're going to study these places, Dan. I mean, that you know, I mean, you know, I well, we're not going we're not going to put a football field somewhere without doing an environmental study. Right. But they don't spend if the board of selectmen. And, and I understand your point. All then don't spend any money on studies with. You, 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 your point is is well taken. That you know you need to have an environmental study before you go forward with with with, with other issues. But you also need to have someone on board. You know, other people on board, whether it's the neighbors. <laughs> You know, or the you know, finance. So I mean, so I think well, you know, in, in in a way, I did you know this, the funding for the studying, was not really you know what we went up there to talk about today. You know, so I think it I think right. it's it's two issues. I think you have you know you made some good points. I've looked at some of these emails that have come across my my computer. I and haven't gotten those emails. I've seen a couple of. I just think that you know for now I think. You know, I'm interested in what other people think about Ann Angelini, because whatever site we, we, we ultimately approve, we're going to study it, <laughs> right? I mean, don't you agree? And I understand it's, you know, I, I, understand, I understand from reading the emails that there's, you know, it's a contentious issue <laughs> about the funding for the proposed sites. That's, that's what I get. So, you know, go ahead, Dara. Well, um, as, as a person who was on Town on Recreation for a long time. I was on it in the 80s when Brody Park was purchased. Um, we've known since then we need more fields. That Back then we identified that. Um, I think a couple of things. I mean, you brought up Brody Park South. Um, I think one of my problems with that is there was an idea when we bought it. It was my understanding that we were preserving that for the future. And a lot of adults use that. I think one of the good things about Antolini, and, and I disagree with you about this walk, I think for our Board of Selectmen to get out there in the field, actually look at it, and rather than just saying we're going to study it, start making a judgment. We've walked it, we've seen it, this is our best opinion, because let's face it, we're about to do budget time, we're fighting for every dollar. I mean, I work in the elections office, every little dollar is right now the economy is really bad. One of the things that I see that makes Antolini attractive is like adding the parking, you're helping the school. Fixing the fields, improving the fields, you're helping the school. And when you're trying to sell something, and I'm not anti-football, but when you're saying we do four games a year, competitive, for how many people? That is something that a lot of people are going to go, wait a minute. My taxes are going up, this, that, and the other thing. And you got four games a year? Exactly. But when you can sell it and say, hey, we're using it four games a year competitively, and we don't want to say us against them, but then we can do girls' softball. We can do soccer. The kids can use it, this and that. It suddenly Maybe becomes... Maybe a foot trail around the 70 acres. Right. It becomes more attractive. Maybe we even put in something so adults can go up at particular times and have a track. I don't know, I'm not an expert on, on how you do this stuff, but it suddenly becomes more attractive, more palatable, and I do think it's part of the responsibility of the Board of Selectmen to start making the difficult decisions about where we spend money to start the process going. Because we don't have a budget where we can say every piece of land that we own, we're going to study you know, I, I got, frankly, I got other things in my office that I'm going to be hitting them up for, and if they're all on the study, I, you know, I can't, I can't operate. So, I, 
I think it's a good thing to move forward with. I'd like to see if it's going to be up in Antolini that we have some type of discussion with the schools about what's, how can we maybe shift it a little bit so the schools get maximum use out of it. You know, and maybe we'll start, maybe at some point we look at the steel road property for some type of a field that doesn't require as much parking. That, that somebody's using it, maybe it's, it's more of an adult thing or something. I don't know, but we can't do everything at once. Anybody else? About Antoline first. Oh, about Antoline. About Antoline? Yeah, sure, I'll be glad to. Uh... I mean, Deanna, are you done? You want more about it? No. Yes. You know. yes. Go ahead, Maria. From, from all the positives we've heard about how great it will be for the school children, it just seems like a no-brainer that Antolini will be the place to really look at for expansion of the fields. However, I think if this Brody Park South Committee has laid out a certain course for themselves, and it's not an expensive course, if, if another study is 500 on top of the Antolini as well, I would respect what their process and say, okay, guys, you want to study two more? Go right ahead. Even though from, from how it looks now, Antolini really does seem to be the place. So just wanted to, to add that. Let me say, then, then, so, so again, I, I mean, I'll probably be redundant, but we've got four locations. We've got Brody Park South, we've got Annalini A, Annalini B, and Old Steel Road. Right. Now, we've, we've already studied Brody Park South, correct? The environmental well, study has been done. Okay. Correct. So is there, is there, and there's proposed to be two, just two more, not, 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 not Annalini B, just no, three, A and, the, and Old Steel The Road. proposal that I brought to the Board of Selectmen, I believe, was $1,880 for the three sites. Okay, for the three sites. Well, one's already done. No, no. no. For the two at For the two Antolini, Antolini and, and Old Steel Road. And the Old Steel Road property. The three sites... Um, I believe the estimate was was 1880 for the three sites. Okay. Um, I know that the 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 um, Old Steel Road property breakout and you brought it out at the meeting um, was 550 because there was some kind of crazy 500 dollar cutoff and your right. comment was geez come up with 50 bucks and you can go do it. <laughs> well, but I, I'm not. This is just a presentation, folks. If you decide up front. If you're not interested in Old Steel Road, then that saves that study and it saves any future studies. Um, if you decide you're not interested in Antolini too, we won't do, you know, the subcommittee uh, would not pursue that. I mean, uh, uh, certainly the ultimate decision is with this board and if at this time this board makes those decisions, then it minimizes um, the remainder of the effort for the Brody South subcommittee, because we still want to come up with a recommendation for Brody South, um, and then it minimizes the the efforts of, of the rec commission, which is fine. I mean, ultimately, it goes whatever the recommendations are go through the board of selectmen. If you make decisions at any point in this on this row that minimizes the efforts of the other committees, so be it. Could I ask for a clarification? Brody, I mean, the Antolini A and Antolini B, are they close to each no. other? Are they? No. One, Dan was absolutely right. The property behind the school is not the use of the feasible, usable property behind the school is not very much larger than what you currently see. It becomes billigo country very quickly as it goes up East Hot and Kill Road. When you look at the topos, bordering East Cotton Hill Road, there's a couple of private landowners, and then there is what appears to be on the topo, probably 10 acres of relatively flat land buried in the woods. But access would be so from, from access from East, would be East, more expensive from East Cotton Hill. Right, but once you got in there, it appears, and that's why you know that's why the committee thought it would make sense to look at it. It appears as though once you get in there, it wouldn't cost much to develop it. Well, wouldn't it make more sense if we were going to spend dollars? 
doing a study to start with the dollars on property we already own? We do own Well, that. we own it. It's part of the 70 acres. Saved. But I, I think what, what, is, what should be said is that we already, most of the fields are already fairly flat. Why would we add another field at that higher topography without first considering this field? If we, knew, if we need something in the future, then I would look yes. at that secondarily. I wouldn't go ahead and study that second higher field um, now for what we need now. I, You're not proposing I, that, though. No, right? well, well I, I see it as a package. The second field overall may be less expensive than the primary field behind the school because of the topography and access. And it may not be, but we don't know that without some kind of engineering. But as far as the studies go, Dan, there's, there, there's, you want three, we've done one, and the priority for to do the next two was... Antolini A and Old Steel, right? That was the original proposal. No, he still wants to do two studies I, at Antolini. Oh, okay. The committee is suggest suggesting it. All right, well, I think I have enough information about the studies, and if anybody else has any more information that they want to ask about them. I just, do you guys have any information about the studies you want to ask? What was, when we were looking for a place to put up a new uh, firehouse, or no, a town garage, I guess it was, wasn't it going to be very expensive to use that piece up in back of the school because they were going to have to blast something like 20 feet of ledge out? I can't they weren't. That. They weren't talking about filling. They were talking about removing. Up in the higher location or directly behind? Like I think it was now. right and directly in back. Well, there the is that. There is a nice big hill right there, right, right. behind the school. That, if they were going to push that back. I can see that. Well, that I don't. I'm not sure, but do you, yeah. you you were in on it. Hold on a second. Uh, I think. <laughs> I'm younger than you. Think. <laughs> <laughs> I have not been involved in building any firehouses. It wasn't right. a firehouse. It was the town garage. garage. He wasn't on that committee. No, I wasn't on that. It was well, Mike yes. Dizzini yeah. and. and uh, I, I think but that was uh, that's why they didn't want it was because it was going to cost so much. And I think that would be brought up in the land and, in well, your engineering report because when I walked Antolini the other day, the, the first when this 2008 report was done, I don't know why they didn't put it in the report. All I'm saying is that verbally, the engineer that walked that said, "See this hill here? This is all ledge. It needs to be blasted out of here." They didn't put it in the report. It'll probably come up this time. But that, you're right, Dan. That's what they're talking about, and that's. And that is at site A or site B. That, that was the field. land between the existing play area and, and the ropes. Okay. okay. That that's little knoll that we walked over. That, w that had some rocks. Yeah, but I mean, out of this day and age, they got to be on. That's not a lot of blasting as far not, as. I don't know. That's why you do the report. <laughs> I, you know, that's why you're looking. That's not that big a knoll. That wouldn't have to be done. It might have to be done to put a town garage, but it wouldn't have to be done to extend the field. Yeah, I was going to say, right. for the field, we just add on top of it, wouldn't we? Yeah. Well, you're not talking about having to excavate excavate to a level of a foundation. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. That's, that's the difference. Right. Yeah. It, if I might, to, to reel this in. We are dealing with an issue where we have had a, a constituency of people come to our meetings once or twice to relay concerns. We've got a group that's studying South Brody that is perhaps going above and beyond the task of the South Brody charge to develop plans for South Brody to go and beyond beyond to start talking about negotiating. We've given no authority to negotiate to buy land. I don't sense any support in the community to start buying land, okay? The money around here is so tight, we're getting ready to start talking about budget process, and the fact of the matter is that there's just no go in the grant list. And when the, there's no go and no building and no construction, that means no new money. And I mean, everybody knows when you come in here, we talk to the building department, there's no construction. There's no addition. So what you have is cost of living in COLA for all the, the existing programs in the schools, and we try to squeeze tighter to make things work because there's no new money. Okay, and I think Beth is probably going to come out and say the grand list went up 1%, and we're still waiting to find out what happened with the cars because when the cars, you know, the gas goes up and everyone starts saying, well, I can't drive the big rig anymore. i got to get a less expensive car. Guess what? That pulls back on our grant list, and we don't have the money. 
I don't sense a significant amount of support in the community. I don't sense on a caucus with a number of members in the Board of Finance any support for an allocation to buy land at this point in time for sports fields. And I think that that's qualified knowing that we have this, this field up here that is a possibility. Now, knowing that the time frame that has been indicated by our engineers that says, look, this is, if we start now, it's more than a year, unless we expedite it by sodding it or turfing it. If we choose not to get involved and intervene and expedite this process with some guidance and some decision making, then all the folks that have expressed concerns to us are just hearing again, like I said, lip service. You know, our job as I look at it, first selectman, selectman, whatever you want to say is, we are here to provide solutions to problems. Okay? I see this, Antolini, I believe, is the sound decision, and I don't think there's really enough magic to pull off Old Steel Road that it will ever happen. And therefore, when you sit there and you say, it's only 500 bucks, right. to me, my job is to save the 500 bucks, right, exactly. mm -hmm. okay? And, and put it somewhere where the taxpayers can use it. I think the guidance is, we hit the go button, and we say, let's get the study, and I know there's been some talk, and they've probably already gotten the wheels turning. But get the guidance and get the, the wheels turning here so that we get better information at this board level about what we can do, and as we move on, and we start talking about, you know, number four on the agenda, capital, are we going to back up our actions with some level of funding to try to make this happen so that the people know, because it's going to take more than a year, or possibly two, to make this happen, that, again, we're just not telling them what they want to hear, that we're actually having a good faith discussion, and it's just not about football. Yeah, they're the drivers that have, have shown us that the need and maybe you know amplified it but it's about spring soccer it's it's maybe we convert that baseball field up there to softball and, and we provide more than one constituency and Daria brings up a good point hey maybe you work in a walking track out there maybe maybe you get you know 20 and I think one of the big things out here is that you, we really need to quantify it I don't know whether 100 parking spots is is right or wrong, but I know that when I go see Santa, there's not mm -hmm. enough parking. Sure. And, and I know a lot of firefighters, you know, Alicia's husband, Morgan, and a lot of people that have concerns when we go to holiday events at Antolini mm -hmm. that we can't get our big rigs in there because, it's tight. you know, Very Santa tight. is a rock star in New Hartford. I mean, he's in there packing the joint, 700 breakfasts. I still can't believe it. They've probably got it down in the Caribbean. Caribbean and a, <laughs> count the women's clubs got more money than they know what to do with. So uh, I, I would say that I think the guidance is that we need to show our leadership and move this along and, and get ready to segue into line item four where we get into the brass tacks of, of how tight the money is but to see if we can start putting a little money behind it to say this could be a two-year project I'm fully confident that Brown's Corner is going to be done, wrapped up with a rededication this spring. I think the community loves the work that we've done there. I think we show, we've shown people what we can do. You know, we've guided that project back, and, and people are really, really happy. And, and I think this is a new opportunity for us to show them that we can do more. But I think we've got to go through the process and outline a, a, a procedure for us, which involves bringing the Board of Education back in. Then working with the Rec Commission, and I, I think the Brody South, uh, South Task Force, as much as I appreciate what they're trying to do, really needs to wrap up their task of, of defining what they see the vision is for South Brody. And, and, you know, we'll work with the Rec Commission and the other agencies and get all the groups together, get the engineers to get, you know, find out what the, the natural resources inventory says. And I think we really need to be careful on how we outline the scope of work and how it addresses specifically what we're looking to do here. We're looking to go, you know, from what was what, 270 feet to three to 420 depth and, and have them comment specifically on proposal. 
you know, this is one of the problems that I saw with, you know, the, the report that was provided for South Brody is that it never really commented on the uniqueness of the parcel to the greater surroundings or what the impact of the specific type of development we're talking about has on the property that, that itself. You know, we need to know if there's anything so unique there that we're harming anything. And, you know, when they do these natural resources inventory, is there anything unique to the greater area. You know, the bottom line is that if you say, yeah, there's pine trees there and there's this and it's beautiful, well, I mean, we all know we could drive right into Hartford. These, the whole town is beautiful, you know? I mean, the, the natural resource inventory needs to do a little bit more than just address the, the inventory of trees and, and birds, because we all know everybody in town's got a bear in their backyard, the the coyotes, all, you know. All the studies are going to be, you know, but you need tens to of thousands of dollars that will be studied you know, whatever site we do, the engineering fees will be. I don't tens know that it'll be tens. that much. Well, I don't know that it will be. How about these guys? I'm assuming that you didn't want the <laughs> the uh, football field at the end of your. Let, let me just say, driveway or? let me just say first of all that I my kids are actively involved in sports as Dan knows. My son played football, still plays basketball, still plays baseball, sure. still plays soccer. My daughter plays basketball, softball. Um, so I'm all for a place for the kids to play. Um, I haven't really followed this too close, obviously for obvious reasons. It's the property on Old Steel Road abuts my house, so for obvious reasons I do not want that. But if I thought it was the proper place, I could be open minded enough to realize that that would be the proper place. And I know that in conversations I've had with the football people, uh, everybody's kind of letting them be the scapegoat, and they're saying they don't want to be the scapegoat. Um, but Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, it just seems like that's what you're trying to account? No, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Just you correct me. Right. The, 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 the problem, problem I'm saying, like, like they, are the they, they, they are simply the straw that broke the camel's back. As right. Dan said, we need softball field for, for the girls. Right. We need recreation space for adults. We, right. we can't put a softball field in down there. It's not football. And so what we're trying to do is solve all of the problems. But that's my point. The conversations because I've had with people, they don't want to go down this road in five years from now. They want to be able, if you're going to spend money on property that right. you don't own, you need to buy a parcel that addresses all those issues at once right. and gives you a possible, they're talking about, well, they want to bring lacrosse in or girls softball. Right. Old Steel Road, to me, does not do that. Um, with that being said, also, as, as she said, for four um, football games a year th that happen. That's why we want to get away from that. It's right, not, right. It's but, but, but my point is, is right now, Brown's Corner is is big enough to, I mean, yeah, there's scheduling conflicts. I know I'm involved. I'm president of basketball right now. I've been involved in, in the baseball. There's scheduling nightmares. As I heard you said, you've scheduled it for, for, for 10 years. I run basketball right now. We have to actually go to Regional 7 on Sundays for our rec basketball program in rec, Regional 7. So my point is on a day when football is down there and has to use Brown's Corner, then Travel Soccer says, well, we need another field because right. we don't go, have a place they, to play. They go to so why couldn't they look into, like we do, I mean, I don't even know if this is feasible, right. but why couldn't they go to Regional 7 and say for four times a year, no, we you need to rent your soccer fields yeah, for four you can't do reason. We go to Norfolk, and okay. American Legion Baseball goes to Torrington. Both Tor Norfolk is not, Norfolk is a viable outlet. American Legion Baseball is going to Torrington. Torrington keeps setting limits and saying, okay, this is the last year, guys. We've got enough field space problems as it is, but we'll let you use the field this year. So it's, it's not even football and lacrosse and all those things. No, don't it's get the, it's I'm the explosion, and you're involved in it, right. of how often kids now play sports. Five years ago, we did not have football. We did not have right. all baseball. Right. So it's not even a population growth issue. It's the <laughs> fact that we now have three very active sports in the fall. Right. We were slowly have one. It was right. great. You know, baseball but, in the spring, soccer in the fall. But my point but is, that's what's creating the, the space. The problem. problem is, it's still only a problem four weekends out of the year. And like she said, you're going to ask the taxpayers to buy a property <coughs> that we don't already own for basically four weekends a year right now. And if that would solve all the sports problems years down the road, that would be fine. But I don't believe, first of all, I don't know, yeah, was there, the problem. you measured off and said that it was 620 by 350 feet on Old Steel Road. Now, and, and you made comment that you needed 200 cars. It seems to me when you put 200 cars in there, it doesn't leave you any room for 
A football field. A football field. Right. Again, is it okay if we take Old Steel Road off the table as a possible size? Is that all right with you? Jack, Jack, Jack. No? I mean, this is our meeting, right? They don't have a say-so of what comes off the table or not. That's true. This is our meeting, all right? Some of Mr. St. Pierre, did you have anything else? No, I just think that's a good thing. The infrastructure work, does any estimates on the cost of infrastructure? Infrastructure. Yeah. In, infrastructure, yeah. thank you, Chris. Yeah. To put the field in on sale Road. I, I have not. That exactly. We've, that we've never done. It would be outrageous. Uh, can you get that through the town? Second of all, these fields don't get green on their own. Irrigation, I've had nobody bring up irrigation. That's a sand pit. Do you realize how much work it's going to take to get though. grass to grow? In that sand pit, irrigation. That has not been brought to the table. Um, well, I think that's that's an, in in a world that we're discussing. That's an apples exactly. to apples. There was comments made earlier about the quality and condition of the fields at Antolini, and I think it's part that we recognize is that the folks that down that do Browns Corner do such a nice job because yeah, there a, is irrigation there. It's an all a lot silent of secret it. why the grass is so green everywhere. It's, it's it's beautiful, but there's been sizable infrastructure done there. Right, and it's that's all paid for. Baseball paid for the themselves. Right. Soccer paid for themselves. The town does not pay for that. Mm -hmm. All the town does is cut the grass. I guess my this is a large expense. I guess my point and is and football with only four very limited resources well, said, is going to pay for the upkeep of that field. Well, I, no, I don't think that we're it. saying that it's it's uniquely anybody's, yeah. and I think that's the no, thing. My, is my that point is, like I was saying, if you. The reason why Antolini is, is to me attractive is because you already own it, first of all, and it gets you by the problem for a while. I'm not saying it's going to be go away, but if you are in fact going to purchase a piece of property that you obviously do not own, it has to be big enough so you're not going down this road again five years from now. Right. I and you agree. have to make mm -hmm. it a big enough facility right. if this problem isn't coming back in four or five years. Or five years. It's not big enough. It's not big enough. It needs to be and like he said. That sight line, you don't have Stedman Road is, is, is broken right now, so you can't, you, the only way you have to go from Stedman Road on to 202, the DOT, the sight line out of there, they're not going to want 200 cars going on to 202 on a Sunday afternoon, I can tell you that right now, right. without changing that sight line, and that's going to be, be a hard that's time getting out of there when we, when we exactly. left. <laughs> exactly. Well, and it's, it's good when it's dark out so you can see the lights. Right. Yeah. During they the day when you can't see lights. So. You better have your foot to the floor when you're coming out of that road. And what, one final comment. I mean, I've, I've been involved in town things for over 30 years. I mean, if we have an opportunity where we have a board of selectmen that's actually willing to <coughs> move a project forward, I don't care where it comes from, because until we start the process, we're dead in the water. And we've been dead in the water for 30 years. I think it's refreshing that we have a board of selectmen who say, Hey, we're going to spend some money to start the process and get it going. It needed to be spent 30 years ago. My thing would be to encourage you, I'd love to see you do A and B, but if all you want to do is A, hey, at least you started the process. Thank you, Darian. What about Dan? No, um, it's the conditions of the roads. Yes. Um, the the width of the roads, even to improve them, I think you'll find some places our roads are 15 feet wide. Um, where you were looking, entering the piece up there, it's 35 feet, which is a good width for a town road. Coming into it, it is not 35. And you would have to. It's going to be tight to straighten out 15 feet of road so cars can pass and whatever, everything else to fill. So it'd be outrageous. I think it would cost you more money if the parking was there. But you don't have the parking, and uh, there's a lot of things that would have to be found out about Old Steel Road that are not. I don't know if people didn't ask the questions or just don't know the uh, answers or what, but the, the water situation there, um, there is not two entrances to that piece of property unless these two people right here would give you the go ahead to cross their property because the road, the, the 
other road that goes in to that area was a right of way. It, and both of these guys own right to Lamont's uh, fence line. So technically the so, right of way is to that property to, to go to the sawmill. So and I don't know what that right of way actually is. Is that 25 feet, 30 feet? I don't yeah. know. We, we haven't really okay. done yeah. that type of research. I own part of it. He owns part of it. I think so we've just... About, there's yeah. still the right we've, way to get to the sawmill. Oh, yeah. Road. So then you have setbacks on top of that. So yeah. To me, now you're taken away from that 620 feet. Well, it's so. clear, and, and that's the thing that, that you folks didn't do the walk with us, is that we acknowledged that when we, when we measured, we, we took into consideration the size of the parking in Brown's Corner, right. which is... You know, Two-thirds of the size of the would, walk. It, it would have taken half that field. Mm -hmm. And what you're basically saying is, I think what Dan was saying, that would you say that... That Brown's Corner was roughly 170? It's 170. Yeah. So you're saying it's not even big enough for what Brown's has now, and he's saying you need more than Brown's. So if you were to put a parking lot the size of Brown's Corner now, there's not enough room for a field, and he's saying you need more than Brown's Corner has now, which I agree. So now that's even taking parking more. on the streets in that area like they do. There's not they're across the street in the NBC lot on a, on a Sunday. Okay. And they're also parking on your beautiful seated park <laughs> with your little trees <laughs> parked around there, too. Yeah, yeah. A yeah. lot of parking on it, which irritated me, to say the least. <laughs> well, I'm working on that, Dan. Thank you. I'm working on that. Well, hopefully we can uh, develop some overflow. I think that uh, everybody acknowledges that uh, this, is, this is not a, a fault thing. To see a program develop and kids get interested in the sport and have it grow so quickly is a great thing. Well, wait, we're actually yeah. building new basketball courts too. Well, and, and, <laughs> you know, and I, you you sat there and you talked about it and I was waiting for it because that's the other acknowledgement is that gym space comes in premium in this town. We're actually paying ten thousand dollars a year for court rentals and and. Well, uh, we're not the basketball. The town's not. No, that's what we I'm saying. We are, but. Right. When I say I we're, I'm talking about yeah. our families. Right. It has to be I, I'm not making a general no, government no, 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 no. or a town or a sports league thing. It's, it's our families. It's right. the same folks. Right. The, the parents of the Absolutely. kids that are doing it. You know, they're driving. There's some coaches that are going, just like Dan just said, are taking their kids to Harlington to that new uh, yeah. court facility and the Works renting like. space. And, you know, we, and we here we have, you know, we're, we we're we're we've moved here. the field house. You know, uh, condition of that up a little bit so that there's the the opportunity to have a, a basketball court in there in the future. At least we preserve that structure so we know that it's there. But you know, I, I think the uh, the sound move is to to push this field expansion forward while the timing is right. The the timing is right because if we choose to sit on this for another month, then the budget process is done. You know, we, we know basically what the parameters of the town were. We're getting ready to have a capital discussion, and, I, and I've got some preliminary numbers uh, to talk about. But if we choose not to uh, intervene and give the guidance that we need to give now, then a year is lost. And I, I know that the families that participate in football at South Brody don't enjoy being the subject of controversy. They're just looking for a place to play with their kids. Okay? It's not about Brody Park South. It's not about where the field is. It's about having a healthy lifestyle, getting outside, enjoying some time with your family and your friends, and doing an organized activity that's just good for you, whether it's Dan doing soccer or you doing basketball or me doing baseball. You know, freely admit I'm not the best coach. Still sub-500 on my basketball team. But we're coming back. But... Uh, I think that if we have this type of thing, I think that the thing that stands to me is that there, I believe, Antolini is the only spot in New Hartford that is absent of controversy. I think everybody in the community could say, somebody used the term no-brainer. I think it might have been Maria. I and I, right. I've sent several emails out to me. It's a no-brainer. Everybody understands it. Everybody can get behind it. There's the synergy of uses for the kids in school. There's the opportunity for spring soccer up there where we could put some soccer games up there. And we could transform that field, which is for little kids, into a softball field. They probably wouldn't even know the difference in the dimensions. And our girls can go up there and play. And you can, you can solve a lot of different problems 
by putting a little bit of seed money. And I know that the tendency from, from the day that I moved into this town is that the youth sports families have uh, paid the freight with Brown's Corner, and they did everything there. They took it from one field property in the 70s to what it is today, and it's beautiful, and I think it's the envy of a lot of towns that surround us. But, you know, sometimes you got to intervene and you gotta, you got to put the, the uh, financial backing of the town behind it to move things forward to solve problems for our constituents. And right now, if we have a problem that's out there, it is the debate over the size of football and the impact on South Road. And I'm not saying that South Brody is not an acceptable location in my mind for practice fields because I think it's been used for soccer for years. It used to be a golf course. And to me, those fields are fine. But I think that at some level, with the lack of sufficient, you know, at this point, they just keep growing. It's not going to get any easier. You know, if we don't get involved now, what if they, what if they come back and we hear they got 175 kids this year, you know, this, this summer coming in? What if it's 200? problem just gets worse. We're going to have more people come to our meeting because we missed the opportunity to act and show leadership on this issue to solve a problem for our constituents. So I say we move it along. We, uh, we put some money behind the study and see what the impact is right in the here and now. And I know that there's probably already been some good legwork done by Northwest on the specifics of this field expansion. But I think the other things are, are further out. I think we could, we could start working to show that it's more than just lip service, like I said, that we're getting behind something to try to solve a problem for our constituents and we, we move this. So if anybody wants to make a motion to that effect, I'm, I'm glad to, to hear it and we can move on because we got, we got some agenda people. <laughs> you want to stay here all night. Uh, uh, I was going to say the same thing. I don't want to say one night. Yeah, so. yeah I'll, I'll make a motion to um, authorize an expenditure for the environmental study for the Antolini field that we expansion that we toured this evening at, at 4.30. Okay. I second. Okay. Any further debate? I think I think the obvious thing is that we can wait to see what the results are. Right. And if we need to do another, we can go from there. But we could also talk about fun again. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Sounds good. I appreciate everybody's input, and I appreciate the people that actually came out and went with us.